Oscar and Emmy winner Aaron Sorkin is showing you how American history is repeating itself right now with his new movie, The Trial of the Chicago 7. And it looks back at how activists protesting the Vietnam War in 1968 were painted as lawless, rioters, targeting the police. I mean, it does sound familiar. Take a look. We've heard testimony from 27 witnesses under oath that say you hoped for a confrontation with the police, that your plans for the convention were designed specifically to draw the police into a confrontation. Well, if I'd known it was going to be the first wish of mine that came true, I would have aimed a lot higher. It's a yes or no question. When you came to Chicago, were you hoping for a confrontation with the police? I'm concerned you have to think about it. Give me a moment, would you, friend? I've never been on trial for my thoughts before. Please welcome Aaron Sorkin. Sonny. Good morning. Oh, I, th this, this film was just so fantastic. <laughs> that, oh, that, that line just took my breath away. <laughs> but uh, before we talk about, about your film, uh, there's another real life courtroom drama unfolding before us right now, the hearings for Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, what do you make of, of what you've been seeing? Well, first, uh, I, I agree with Sarah. Uh, we shouldn't be having this hearing at all. Um, uh, so, uh, so that's my problem. Uh, and then when I listen to her, I'm, I'm concerned uh, with, uh, she's what they call an originalist, uh, which means that she believes that the, the Constitution that was written in the 18th century everything in it, it, that it's not a living document, that it doesn't apply to today. Um, and of course we know that when it was written, it, it wasn't, it didn't include rights for women, it didn't include rights for uh, black people, it didn't include rights for the LBGTQ community. Uh, it didn't account for any kind of uh, uh, modern modernity. Uh, so uh, so I'm concerned about that, but mostly I'm concerned about a U.S. Senate uh, that just uh, a, a Republican Senate that doesn't operate in good faith. Now, uh, Aaron, 2020 has been one for the books. I'm curious, does watching a year like this play out make you want to write about it? And what would the finale look like? Please tell me it won't be Revenge of the Murder Hornets. Uh, it wouldn't be if I wrote it. Uh, I think, but uh, listen, a lot will be written about these uh, about these last few years uh, by screenwriters and by playwrights. But uh, my my prediction is that you'll never see Donald Trump as an on screen character. That he'll always be off screen. That you'll see him on televisions and news footage because he's simply implausible as a character. Uh, and I, you, you can write heroes and you can write villains, but there's no such thing as an interesting character who doesn't have a conscience. <laughs> so, Aaron, you know, this new film, The Trial of the Chicago 7, has been in the works for 14 years. Yeah. Uh, but you say you know who became the impetus to finally make it happen. And now it feels more timely given the, the protests and the police clashes and how we see government treating its own people, you know? It is an extraordinary thing. Um, how hard was this to, to coalesce once you decided, yes, this is the direction? Was it a difficult piece to write or did it flow from you? Well, what happened first, as you pointed out, it, it was 14 years ago on a Saturday morning that uh, you know who, who is Steven Spielberg, asked me to come to his house. And just to be clear, that's not common. I, I don't hang out with Steven Spielberg. Uh, and he told me he wanted me to write a movie about the Chicago 7, and I said, that's fantastic. That would make a great movie. Count me in. And as soon as I left his house, I had to call my father to ask him who the Chicago 7 were. Um, I was just saying yes to the movie with Steven. Yeah. And I heard the word trial in right. there, and, and that excited me too. So at first it was just... Uh, uh, and then I learned about it. There are a dozen or so great books. There's a 21,000-page 
trial transcript. And most critically, I got to spend time with Tom Hayden. Uh, Hayden died about four years ago, but he was very much alive uh, yeah. when I started yeah. this. Uh, but what I feel like is that we've been on a 14 year collision course with, with history. Uh, at first, this was just a great story about something that happened uh, in our past. Uh, but then in the last few years, as we began to hear first candidate Trump and then President Trump at his rallies, getting nostalgic about the good old days when we used to carry that guy out of here on a stretcher and I'd like to punch him right in the face and beat the crap out of him, mm. it was the demonization of protest, uh, the demonization of athletes, mostly black athletes, kneeling uh, during the national anthem, um, uh, the, the, the demonization of congressmen, congresswomen whose skin is darker than mine, uh, uh, being told to go back to where they came from, uh, even though where they came from is here. Uh, and uh, the film started to become more relevant. We thought it was plenty relevant when we were making it in Chicago last winter. Uh, we didn't need it to get more relevant, but then suddenly in Minneapolis and Kenosha and Lexington and Seattle and Washington, uh, and even back in Chicago, protesters yeah. took to the streets and those protesters were often met yeah. by police yeah. with tear gas and nightsticks. And it was a replay of 1968. Yes. And on a very exciting Sarah. note, though, to change uh, tunes a little bit here, you recently got the cast of The West Wing back together for a special that's airing tomorrow night. And you say this yeah. isn't a classic reunion show, but the actors are reprising their roles for the first time in 17 years. What else can you tell us about it? Sure. Well, what we did was uh, the, the original cast of The West Wing, we've partnered with a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization called When We All Vote. It's a get out the vote. Uh, apparatus and it combats voter suppression as well. And what we did was in, instead of a Zoom table read, we, under very strict COVID protocols, restaged an episode of the show as a play uh, at a theater in downtown LA. Uh, and then that play was filmed kind of in the style of a modern Playhouse 90. Uh, and that begins tomorrow night, Thursday, uh, uh, October 15th on HBO Max, and it, during the act breaks where you'd ordinarily see a commercial, uh, we get to hear from people like uh, Michelle Obama and President Clinton and Samuel L. Jackson and Marley Matlin and Lin-Manuel Miranda, uh, and they, they hit various points about voting, we hope, in an entertaining way. Right. Mm. And so how was it to have everybody together again? Oh. Was it, it very, was... very nostalgic, or was it just fun? It was incredibly fun, but it was also incredibly uh, emotional uh, for everyone to get back together. Right. They, they, they found these characters in three seconds flat. It took them no time uh, to get back to where they were. And, uh, you know, we, we stay in touch uh, as a group, but we'd never been together and certainly never been together to do an episode of The West Wing uh, in uh, about 15 years. Wow. Well, this is, it's going to be fantastic. Listen, thank you for coming in and talking to us about The Trial of Chicago 7. It is a brilliant film. It's a brilliant film. It debuts this Friday on Netflix. And West Wing special, to benefit We All Vote, premieres tomorrow night on HBO Max.